please rise. Before you're all seated, just for a moment uh, to greet you, family and friends, you're here today for a few reasons. One, because you have a special and meaningful relationship with Kyle and Winnie. They invited you here today because you are dear to them. And also, you came today because they are dear to you. Secondly, you are here today to stand in witness, to witness their love, to witness their vows to one another, to witness the covenant that they will make to one another before God. And thirdly, as witnesses, your presence here today communicates a level of affirmation and commitment to them, to their marriage, their family, and their future. Your presence here today says, we're here for you, and we will be here for you. So thank you for being here today. I know I can speak on behalf of Kyle and Winnie to say that they are very grateful to have you here with them today, testifying to their love. Let's take a moment to pray. God, we thank you for this beautiful day and this beautiful venue with a beautiful couple. 
two hearts to who today will make covenant before you to be joined as one. God, we ask today that your will would be done, that your name would be glorified, and that we would know your love for all of us, as well as your love that is abundantly present between Kyle and Winnie. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Today is a day to thank God for his providence, his provision. Born on opposite sides of the world. And after that, living in opposite ends of the country. How God saw fit to join the two of you together and end up in Wisconsin. On a farm with animals bleeding in the distance and a, a beautiful, gorgeous day. I, I'm so thankful to be here with you, and I know that everyone else here is as well. Marriage is an institution created by God for our good, for His purposes, and for His glory. We find its origins in Genesis chapter 2, when God made man and woman. In Genesis 2.18, it says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. God similarly, I think, looks at as wonderful of a man as Kyle is and says, we probably shouldn't leave him alone. <laughs> and thankfully, he made Winnie. And again, here we find ourselves today. He made a compliment for one another, designing the two of you to be strong where the other is weak and to pick one another up, to be a blessing to each other, to serve each other, to prefer one another. All of these things encapsulated in God's design for marriage. Continuing on in verse 21, it says, So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed it up in its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. I think a uh, modern day translation would be, Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Praise God. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. It's mysterious and miraculous how two people with two souls, two individuals, can become one. This is the miraculous work of God. In this, God is not asking you to no longer have an individual personality or to no longer have individual preferences, individual feelings. What He is asking of you is that you would conduct your lives not as two people living together, and seeking your own welfare, your own ambitions, your own goals, but as one flesh, making decisions together that would glorify God, praying together, serving each other, and glorifying God together. And for this one flesh to be healthy and successful in marriage, it truly takes the two individuals in marriage, pursuing God as individuals and as one, as I told you both in the meetings that we had before, that if you want to be the best husband, you can be Kyle. It will not be by your own willpower. It will not be because you're studying and researching how to be the best husband that you can be. It will be that you are pursuing Christ first and foremost in your life. You will find His Holy Spirit will work in your heart to make you the husband that you could never be on your own abilities. Likewise, Winnie, you will not be the best wife because you find the right YouTube marriage gurus or the right books to read. You'll be the best wife that you can be by pursuing Jesus Christ with all of your heart. And similarly, His Holy Spirit will work in your heart to help you selflessly serve one another. I know in my own life, I'm a better husband, I'm a better father, I'm a better pastor, a better friend. All of these things, the best version of myself, is not when I'm trying to make myself better at all those things. Rather, when I'm solely focused on pursuing Jesus Christ 
and he works in my heart to improve all those areas. Not only is marriage something that God gave us to help one another, but also he gave us marriage as a picture of our relationship with him. We see multiple times in scripture that the church is called the bride of Christ. There is a beautiful symmetry in the way that the bride and groom have become so captivated by each other that they want nothing more than to be together and commit to spend the rest of their lives together. Not only is this commitment seen, or is the commitment seen in this imagery, but also the selfless sacrifice that is necessary for marriage. It was also modeled by our Savior Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. He says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. And now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. And I know this idea is becoming less and less popular today as years go by, but there is a purpose in God's design, and it is for our good and his glory. This also is the reason, though, that it is so important that you, Kyle, live a life pursuing Christ with all your heart. Because this role and this responsibility, without the heart of Christ within you, can be destructive because of sin and because of selfishness. That is why the next verse places the greater weight on you, on the husband, saying, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Scripture tells us that we know the love of Christ because he gave himself for our sins. Jesus himself said there is no greater love that a man has than to lay down his life for his friends. Jesus described what greatest love looks like. Then he showed what that great love looks like by laying his life down for us, paying for our sins. Not only did he describe it and model it, he then prescribed it to us. And husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, who loved them and gave himself. Your role and your responsibility is not of a domineering husband, but of a sacrificial husband, loving and serving the welfare of Winnie. I have never met a wife that is unhappy with her husband when he is serving her this way. To quote one of my favorite pastors, John Piper, he said, when a man joyfully bears the primary responsibility for Christ-like leadership, I've never met a wife who is sorry she married such a man. Another necessary element in a healthy marriage has been supremely modeled in Christ, and that is forgiveness. Another, um, Kyle and Winnie, you both have been forgiven of your sins by placing your faith in Jesus Christ, it is the same grace of God that empowers us to then provide that same forgiveness that we have received to one another. Marriage is a covenant relationship where the skill of forgiveness must be the couch that we return to perpetually to sit on together. Because we are flawed, we all have sin, because we will hurt each other. It's hard to imagine that on such a beautiful day when we're exchanging vows, but there will come a day when that happens, and that's why we must be quick to show the forgiveness that Christ gave us and extend it to one another. So now, if you will, turn and face each other, we will exchange covenant vows to one another. Not yet. All right. Kyle, you're first. I, Kyle, take you, Winnie. I, Kyle, take you, Winnie. To be my wife. To be my wife. And I do promise and covenant. I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. Winnie. I, Winnie, take you, Kyle, to be my husband. And I do promise and covenant before God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful wife. 
in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live. You two have rings for one another. Good job, Ken. <laughs> Kyle, as you prepare to slide the ring on Winnie's finger, you can repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness. May it be a constant reminder that I am yours and you are mine. Winnie? Place the ring on Kyle's finger and repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness. May it be a constant reminder that I am yours and you are mine. Now the scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 through 12, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. This passage cites a threefold cord. Obviously, after coming about how two are better than one, but then all, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, mentions a third element to the chord. We believe that those three chords represented are Kyle, Winnie, and Christ. That your marriage is strengthened when it is intertwined with Christ and when you are held together by Christ. So at this time, they're going to do a chord binding together. bow your heads. I'm now going to pray over the couple. God, we thank you once more for this beautiful, wonderful day. We thank you for this couple who have chosen to commit themselves to one, each, to one another for the rest of their lives. God, I ask by your Holy Spirit that you would do the work in their hearts that is necessary to see this covenant through for the rest of their lives. I ask that you would give them grace for one another a supernatural love for one another, selflessness for one another, that they would prefer the other, and in so doing be a beautiful picture and model of the love of Christ for each of us. 
God, we pray that the vows that were spoken today would be an anchor that would keep them steady in stormy seas, that you would cause them to be strengthened together more and more, love each other more and more as each day goes by, and that their love for each other, their marriage together, would be lived in a way that causes those who get to watch their life to see your goodness and your faithfulness in their life. God, be glorified in their covenant union together this day. In Jesus' name, amen. It is with great joy today that by the authority vested in me by God and the state of Wisconsin, before God and these witnesses, I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Ladies and gentlemen, you can turn and face the crowd. It is my honor today to present to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Kyle and Winnie Nygaard. Yeah. 